What is up? Welcome to December. Welcome to Eggnog Gift Card and Mariah Carey season. And welcome to the Nook Podcast. I am your host, Stephen Murphy. And amidst all the craziness that December can bring, I am honored that you would choose to spend a little time with me here. So thank you. One more thing that you can bank on in December is retrospection. And the way that that will look here in the nook is, first of all, reflecting on what an amazing year it has been getting this podcast started. I have met some incredible people, learned a whole lot, and I am really excited to see where this goes in 2022. Secondly, for this month, I will be taking a look back at some of the most unexpected moments from a few of the episodes. Times when the discussion just went ways that I never could have predicted. And how those moments turned out to be times that I won't soon forget. First up is my new friend, Dan Arthur. Now, the surprises on this episode from April of this year started long before the conversation began. Dan and his wife, Michelle, are the morning hosts from Air One Radio. This is a nationally syndicated radio show. And to be quite honest, I was more than a little surprised when Dan even agreed to be on this very new, very small podcast. I went into the recording thinking that I already had my big win just getting him on the show. And then this happened. Yep. Yep, exactly. That's the go on the air. <laughs> Moments like that are, are, I mean, to me, that sounds an, like an obvious thing to share and have a good laugh about. But are you also able to to share maybe stuff that, that isn't so fun, you know, that where you can be a little bit more vulnerable about something that's going on at home or something that you encountered the day before in, in that kind of a relatability to your listeners? Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> in thinking about it, it makes me emotional. I, I want to compose myself. But um, <laughs> last year or 2019 into 2020, I, I dealt with the, sorry, uh, some massive depression. Uh, uh, isolation and uh, just uh, some dark times for me. And I, I, I can't explain why. I actually went to the doctor and then asked, you know, what's going on with me? Was it my doctor happens to be a Christian? He said, well, obviously you're dealing with, you know, there's something spiritual going on here. You, you've got to like, you know, I know you're not wavering in your faith and I wasn't, um, but I was just so depressed. So, so depressed. And she it was really, it was a hard time for her because I was unloading on her every night and she'd catch me in the a dark closet, just sitting down. I couldn't, I felt like the gears in my head wouldn't stop turning and I was just really it, struggling. So there was a point when I kind of saw, started seeing the light of day again, that I said, I know people are dealing with this same thing, especially after 2020 hit. I know people feel isolated. And I'm the guy who's, I'm, you know, I'm the guy that likes to smoke meat. I'm the guy that likes to watch sports. I'm, I'm the every man on the air and the stupid husband sometimes. <laughs> I, never, I never get that real or I don't very often. And I, I felt it was important. Hmm. So there was a time and I still reference it. I referenced it last week. In fact, that, uh, I, I was honest with them, the listeners about what I was struggling with and, and that God threw it out threw out all of these struggles. I felt his grace. Mm. Like he never stops loving you no matter what you think. There was a time in church. I was sitting with a buddy of mine and, uh, I was on it. She told me to open up to somebody else besides her. And I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that's important <laughs> to have a Christian brother yep. or someone. Yeah. There was a time where I heard the pastor say, God loves you. And he, and just a simple statement like that. And my buddy says, do you believe that? And I said, yeah, I believe it for everybody else. Mm -hmm. I do. I believe God loves every one of these people sitting here, but he doesn't love me. Yeah. So that was I needed to share that, be honest and open to them because I just felt like, man, I know that people are dealing with this and it's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I say that now. I was super ashamed of it then. 
there's nothing to be ashamed of, and it's okay to to be transparent. And I, I think people too often just go, "I got to put this good face on," you know, "I got to put it on the show." Not not me. I mean, who cares? I have a radio show. You too. All your friends, all the people, your, your relatives. You you put on a show. You you are this person. You put together. And that's not how you feel inside. Yeah. Well, and uh, I obviously I had no idea that you were going to go there. Um, there's been a big part of the motivation to where this place that I'm sitting right now that that is the nook um, that has been my my sanctuary. Uh, I was diagnosed with depression in October of 2019. Um, just after I I've got a video on you making me think about it. I'll link it in the show notes for this. Is that it's just called the dark night of the soul. Um, those moments where you do feel so isolated and so desperate. And for that matter, you, you really nailed it for me there. Just feeling like God can forgive everybody but me. And I am so grateful for a counselor who just, I mean, quite literally hammered me on that to, to basically say, how dare you think so limited of our God, our creator, oh. God, to think that somehow you are outside of that. And it took months, actually, I, I, it took the better part of a year before I could even consider it. And I'm so glad that I can sit here now and have a conversation with a brother that I just met and lock eyes for a little bit and say, dude, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm Oh, I, I, I don't know if I've, there's ever been a time in my life that I have, have appreciated his grace and his love. And that is so much of what I want listeners to hear on this podcast, that no matter what your dark times have looked like, oh, there is a light. And that's, it's, it's always so easy to, you already touched on it, to say the right thing and, and give it the hype or yeah. whatever. But I will keep saying it because I know right here in my knower how, how real that thing is. What, what, did you get some response when you've had those moments of transparency like that on the air? Yeah. Yeah. Uh it's kind of hard to face it, you know, to hear these stories, but I felt like I had some, some guys reach out to me and I, I really felt like that they heard that at their darkest moment. Mm. And for whatever reason, they were listening to air one. And one of them in particular, I I'll never forget because he, he wasn't a listener. Like he had just discovered the show. It's a God thing, you know, it's right. God timing. Yep. He just discovered the station. Yeah. And, and he heard me uh, kind of confess as to what I was going through. And, and he said, he said, kind of like you just said, he, he said, it sounded like you were, you were talking, like I was talking through you. And uh, I thought that was a strange thing to say, but I understood it. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, some there's, there's, you know, I, I feel for me to, to step out of my comfort zone and can uh, talk about this depression issue, mental illness for me, was a massive step, but I really felt like God was pushing me that way. And I, and there was a, I'm more comfortable. I'm like you, I'm a lot more comfortable uh, discussing it. It's still emotional for me, obviously, because uh, I have a hard time even verbalizing it. Um, but you know what? It's good. It's really good. God's put, God has, Torn Walls has this song, God's not finished with you yet. If you're alive, if you're breathing, you've got a purpose, you've got a mission. And if you have, wherever you're listening, and whatever you do for a living, you don't need a ma massive microphone like you and I have. You have that microphone with your family, your friends. You have a calling in your life if you know Jesus. And I, I think, you know, that's that's really what it's all about. Us us as a community getting together and and you know, lifting each other up and and being a support system. Right. And you probably felt that, at least I'm going to assume that you felt something similar and that I remember it's like, okay, I've got this diagnosis. Uh in counseling and then with my doctor and, and ultimately on a medication that I'm, I'm, I know some people have their hangups with that, but I'm, I'm just as grateful for that. Uh, but then just like the, the, the shame of, do I even tell anybody this? 
And then when I did, it's like I only told my closest three or four friends and just mm-hmm. kind of waited to see if they were going to kind of give me the shun from that point. And their love, their acceptance, their prayers made me realize, wow, that, you know, it's like the enemy wants to keep us in the dark and and in that fear. But sharing it in the right places at the right times has actually been so good for me and then ultimately good for for others. One of my earlier episodes, I actually interviewed my counselor and she was nervous about it because she had never done huh. anything like that. And I said, look, I'm not just trying to hype you. I believe that somebody will be helped. It, it may not be thousands, but I believe somebody will be helped. The day that that episode released, I was sitting here that morning having coffee and reading, and I started getting texts from a friend of mine in South Carolina who had his own questions, had been feeling like it was time for him to get in counseling. So he wanted to know how often I was going. What were we talking about? Was I getting anything out of it? Those kind of things. And it it went on for well more than an hour. And I, mm. I, I sent my counselor a screen grab and I just said, I told you that this was going to help somebody. And who knows how many people didn't reach out to me that were having that same kind of feeling that day or whenever it was that they listened to it because something was coming to light for them. Yeah. I'm so I glad that, that uh, you that you shared that. Well, I'm I'm happy I did too. I honestly didn't think that that's where we go, but <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy I, I got to share that too. I just uh, 20, 2020 especially was uh, such a lonely time for so many people. I think that uh, that you know it's not the enemy stronghold. I will never give the enemy that credit, but I think that that's certainly something that uh, the church is dealing with. You know, I really do. I think there's the isolation, loneliness, uh, and fear, doubt in themselves. And I, I just, there's a reason you and I went through what we went through, right? So, and here we are, and we're stronger, and we're better for it. And our faith is built. Our faith is stronger because of it, I think. Oh, that's... Think. And, and that's that's a message you have. Yeah, there's there's no way for me to <laughs> quantify the, the difference in my faith in just the last two, three years, uh, having gone through, I wouldn't wish that dark time on anybody, but, um, I, I also feel like it's given me kind of a, a sensitivity to see when a friend is struggling and then it's just kind Mm -hmm. of praying for that same grace. It's like, God, give me an opportunity to talk to him and just say, bro, I can see you're kind of spiraling here. Are you, Mm -hmm. are you dealing with something? Are you talking to somebody? that can help you process your, your mess. Cause I, <laughs> I think I've said it before after about two, three years in counseling, I think we're all a mess and, and <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not a big, you know, wet blanket kind of a thing. I just think it, ask anybody, you know, they're dealing with something at varying degrees. I'm just, <laughs> I'm the poster boy for, for counseling. I think everybody should be talking to somebody. Maybe everybody needs it. It's just who will who will actually take those steps and get past their own hang-ups or stigmas about it and make sure you that, that you've got a good voice in your ear to help you process. And you mentioned something, you're an ear to people. Like if you see somebody spiraling, you're there. They need to get that off their chest. They they have to talk to somebody and you are that somebody. I think that's I think that's almost as important as just you know, telling somebody it's listening, you know, and it's, that's hard for us um, Americans, you know, I, I think it I just is, we're just so oh, all yeah. about me. Yep. Well, and again, there's those stigmas, uh, whether real or assumed that it's mm-hmm. like, well, if I tell somebody I've got depression, what are they going to think? Right. What is this, you know, it, I remember going to tell my boss, it's like, is he going to think less of me? Is he going to be looking at me sideways now? wondering what is this, you know, how is this going to shake out for me? Um, right. Those kind of things that it's, it's that fear of the unknown. But again, I can say that, that after talking to people and being forthright about it, and for that matter, including them and just saying, you know, this is what I've, this is where I'm at with this now. And would you please pray for me? Um, that 
I know I can't do this without others, you know, and that mm. I'd like to think that that opens those circles into yeah. we're we're only going to make it with each other that I it, you're foolish to think you can do it on your own because again I, I believe that the enemy's job is to isolate and make you feel like you're the yeah. only one dealing with it well put that to to rest you need people you need good people yeah. um or or you may never get out of that and maybe that's the part that scares me too that it's like at the at the risk of sounding you know hyped with bravado it's like not on my watch i i I don't, I had a friend commit suicide a little over a year ago. Mm. Um, same type of stuff. And it's just like, everybody mm. thought that he was in a much, a much better way. And then one night he's mm. just gone. And that's, that was one of those wake up. Oh, damn it. I, yeah, that's, I, I'm going to yeah. keep an eye on people as best. That, even if I have to be a little obnoxious, I'm going to keep an eye on, on people. Well, keep it up, man. I think that uh, it sounds, when I hear you talk, it just sounds like this is on your heart, even given a, a special calling, as it were. I think that that's, I think it's awesome. I, I, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying. I don't, not the bravado thing, you know, I, I think what you said is right on. Not on my watch. That should be, that should be your slogan, man. Not on my watch. I knew that I had to start with this one because I know that the holidays can be some of the most trying times for people dealing with depression and anxiety. If that is you and you hear nothing else from this podcast, you are not alone. God cares for you more than you will ever know. Don't let it get the best of you. Find someone to talk to, get some good counseling, talk to your doctor, we need you here and god is not finished with you yet you know hey you know what if that's you could you please email me the address is steven at nookpodcast.com it's in the show notes i want to be praying for you because i know all too well how depression can separate you isolate you and make you feel like no one cares i want to be praying for you so please drop me an email If you would like to hear that whole interview in its entirety, spin back in the catalog to April 12th of 2021. I think you will enjoy the rest of it as well. Check the show notes for links to Dan's social media feeds, my social media feeds, and if you would like to help keep this podcast going in 2022, look for the link to buy me a coffee, which is just a really simple way for you to contribute financially to the Nook podcast. More unexpected moments like this one are coming each Monday for the rest of the month, and I hope you're here for them. Make sure you're subscribed, and if you know someone who could use a little bit of encouragement, send them a link. There's always room for more. Thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you here next time in the Nook. The Nook Podcast is a production of Sozo Digital Media.